who are we, where do we come from, and why are we here? Those are the three fundamental questions we need to answer. And then the fourth one that follows that is what you just asked me. Once we know all this, since we have all this information, where are we going? Where are we going to go with this? And where are we going to go with this, we can only answer once we know the answers to those first three questions. Because how could we possibly know where we're going if we don't know who we are, where we come from, and why we're here? So we can't answer that question until we have absolute answers for the first three questions. However, this becomes quite interesting because you can, and this is also at this point and becomes a debate about our physical presence on this earth and our spiritual presence on this earth. Because you got to, you know, you got to also realize that this is just a physical vessel for your soul and your spirit. So now, you, when you merge the two, the spiritual and the physical, it becomes even more interesting. Now, in slave species of God, I only really deal with a physical our physical presence on earth as a species. Because once you start opening the door to the spiritual argument, that's another ten books on its own. So let's first deal with our physical presence because we all have a soul. Well, arguably some, some psychics will tell you that there are people on this planet walking without, without souls and that's a horrific thought, but I'll leave that for another debate. But let's assume that we all have a soul and point of birth, a soul enters our body. So now we have a physical and a spiritual a blend of, of, of an entity here that evolves, grows, and goes somewhere. So where, do we, where are we going? Where are we going as a species? Well, first of all, we are beginning to wake up as to the realities, who we are and where we come from and why we're here. We're able to deal with those answers, and we're starting to embrace the truth without freaking out too much. And this is what we call the growth of consciousness, knowledge and information. And that consciousness is also linked to the spiritual consciousness, knowing about ourselves and starting to ask questions about who we are and where we're going. That all, that all starts to fill the, 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 the cup of consciousness that, that starts to fill up and give us the knowledge and information that we're looking for. And as a species in this particular form, we have... We have huge problems. We have genetic problems that, that have been in, introduced into us by our creators. We have been genetically deformed and retarded to die very young, to be riddled with disease, not to, to use certain parts of our brain that allows you know, functionality like ESP and, and other abilities that, that we should really have. But that is also the one thing that seemingly the Anunnaki did not did not count on. They didn't count on the spiritual evolution of this new species that they created because in a short space of time, in the last 3,000 years, we have evolved dramatically and possibly, possibly, are at the highest point of evolution that our species has ever reached. With that level of evolution comes knowledge and comes consciousness. Now, that all re reverts back to vibrational frequency. Now, all our thoughts, every time, while we talk, you know, the, what we're doing here is actually really primitive. You know, because we, if we were slightly more advanced, I wouldn't have to talk, make this horrible sound so that you can understand me. I would just think something and my thought waves would be picked up by a receptor in your brain, which you have, but you, it's just not switched on because our DNA, our DNA has been, that specific gene has been switched off. So now we've still got to resort to this very animal-like kind of communication device by talking, making a sound. You can't hear what I'm saying when I do that. Okay? But while I talk, my thought waves are leaving my head at the same time as the sound waves are leaving my mouth. And because you have these receptors that we call ears, you can pick up those invisible sound frequencies. See, it comes back. It always comes back to frequency. So your ears, these receptors, pick up this frequency and you can decipher that frequency through this miraculous process and understand what I'm saying. Now, if we can manipulate our DNA, which we're probably very close to, or just evolve into that process where we don't have to make these sound waves and just understand each other by thinking and communicating by thinking, that takes us to a whole different spiritual level and a level of consciousness. Now, at the same time, that all these thoughts that are leaving our heads are entering the universe, just like light, just like sound. All the sound and the radio and TV shows that we broadcast all over the planet and all our thoughts 
are leaving planet Earth and going into space, flying in all directions. And those thoughts and those, that information is being picked up by other civilizations, by advanced beings, advanced civilizations. And if they are advanced enough to understand our level of frequency, they'll understand that we've reached a certain level of consciousness that needs looking after and taking care of. We're no longer a bunch of chimpanzees swinging in trees. That really has, is of no interest. But now we're exploring space and exploring our, our solar system and other planets, and we've reached a stage where suddenly we are getting a lot more attention for the, uh, from the other infinite amount of advanced beings in the universe, saying, ha, huh, look, there's a new planet with a new species that's reached a level of, you know, they want to come out of their cradle. So let's start making contact and communicating with them and explaining to them the bigger picture without scaring them too much.